The grid serve forecourt here in Braintree, well just outside of Braintree, is the first in the UK. They're hoping to build another 100 more with the next one being in Norwich. But of course, this kind of infrastructure is absolutely necessary because of the government's mandate to move to 100% sale of new cars only being electric vehicles. We know that the infrastructure is lacking quite now, so these forecourts are very welcome. Coming into grid serve outside of Braintree. Wow, look at this. Whoa, is there a play area? <laughs> so what you do, you take you take this one, you've got to push that push that as you pull it out. <laughs> I, could, I can't turn it around. Ah. They want to push it. It's not every forecourt that you leave your car at the pump, so to speak, and then head inside while you juice up. The grid serve forecourt is more like a service station for electric vehicles or EVs. Located just outside of Braintree, Essex in the east of England, this forecourt is actually the first of its kind in the world. Situated just off the A131 Great Notley Bypass, which intersects with the busy A120, which links to Stamstead Airport to the west. Inside, at first glance, it seems like your typical but pint-sized service station where you can pick up snacks, magazines and gadgets for the road or grab a pastry, cake, coffee or tea. But venture upstairs and there is a play area for the kids with an augmented reality screen and digital games. There are bookable meeting rooms and an open plan showroom to find out whether buying or leasing an EV is for you. There's a presentation space and an exhibition area. While you won't find a full gym here, you can pump your legs for a bit on one of two exercise bikes. It's a sneaky way of generating tiny bits of energy back into the building, but let's keep that a secret. A visual statement of sustainability is the solar canopy above the forecourt. But this place is not just about charging your EV using renewable energy. It has a bit more to it than that. We're here today with uh, Declan McLaughlin. Thank you for joining me uh, from Grid Serve in Braintree. You're the duty manager. I uh, I'm well, so we're all duty managers. My official job title is Grid Serve Guru. Grid Serve Guru? Yes. <laughs> oh, so you're a perfect person to speak to. Exactly. That's fantastic. Exactly. So we're, you're holding a, an education day today, which looks absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, why are things like this important? Why are out, outreach important for grid serve? So it's, it's hugely important because uh, so many people don't know much about EVs. Um, you know, it's not the biggest coverage in the media of how it works, why it is a vi viable option nowadays. So reaching out to the local communities is hugely important to educate and make people aware of how this world works, why it's important to... To, to drive electric and, and to push sustainability so much. And uh, we, we also really want GridServe to be a community hub. So the forecourts will be for the community. Uh, we're doing a lot of work in the community uh, alongside today. We've got scouts coming down for visits. We're going into local schools in the future because uh, we really want it to, to feel like a second home to people. Uh, and that way it encourages people, the more they're here, the more they're around the electricity and the electric cars and the sustainable, sustainable products and it hopefully it becomes more normal for them and it just bleeds into everyday life is the hope. So. And um, as geography educators we always go for, it's not just the environmental sustainability or the economic sustainability, it's that social aspect, and political aspect as well and that's what I've really enjoyed seeing at the moment. So I can see that you're trying to treat this place as an education centre, not just yeah. as a forecourt, you know, a, a service station for yeah. EV owners. So can you give us a couple of 
specific examples about how you would treat this as an education centre? So I think that, that the main thing would always come down to the role that I myself uh, do and uh, alongside my colleague Sheridan. Uh, is that we're the gurus, as I <laughs> said earlier. So we spend a lot of our time, we kind of always just hanging around, talking to customers. Uh, we help people with charging. Loads of people we get in now, it's probably 60 to 70% maybe of our customers that come in have just bought their car in the last month or so. And a huge amount of the time don't actually know a lot about EVs. Um, so we spend a lot of time talking to people, uh, teaching them about ele electric vehicles, how they work, uh, what we do. Uh, so I think the gurus are the main part of the educational center. Um, obviously days like today are huge for that as well. We're, we're going to be hosting a lot more events of this nature of inviting people down to teach them all about this and do big talks and have interactive sessions as well. Um, so it's really utilizing the space for that and having people on site that you can speak to. Uh, so it's not just a case of you come in and it's empty all the time and you do your own thing. There's always going to be someone here that you can have a chat to. If you if you drive electric, if you don't drive electric, we'll talk to you about it all. So there's no pressure as well. It's it's although we do leasing here, right. we're not pressuring the leasing or pushing people for sales. We're not salesmen at all. <laughs> so you know. So so to clarify then, are you are you already or are you going to be in the near future taking school trip bookings, for yeah, example? That's something we're working on. We're just hashing out the educational materials at the moment awesome. uh, and hopefully early next year maybe it will be something we're, we're going to be start doing. We're already in contact with a lot of schools, uh, it's just getting those materials in place and obviously we opened last December in tier 4 lockdown so right. we've, we've been on hold and hiatus for what we really want to do for the last 8 or 9 months. It's only really now that we're doing things like this where we can invite people in, we can go out and, and, and do everything so yeah. yeah. I'm going to look at my camera now and say, look, all my fellow teaching geography at the moment, my colleagues, if you're in the area, <laughs> you need to get in touch with these folks. Yes, definitely. At the very least, come speak to us so we can yeah. teach teach everyone about it so they can teach the students at the very least. So Awesome. So um, when, when people look at this this as a development site, they kind of think to themselves, they look, okay, we can see what you're doing here. It's quite obvious, the, the very overt stuff, electric charging infrastructure, but you did build this on a greenfield site you did build this on the edge of town yeah. so when somebody goes through that critical thinking inquiry based about what have you done to kind of protect or enhance the environment in lieu of say taking some spot of land for this forecourt so we put a huge amount of effort into uh, the the land on site that we have so there's a lot of green areas on site uh, all of the plants and the the trees that have been chosen for what we've planted here have all been specif specifically picked out by our biodiversity manager uh, and then uh, we planted a, a load of trees in the local area so there was a huge amount of trees that were just uh, blocking the view of the forecourt what we did was we cut those down uh, and then replaced them elsewhere with better trees that had a higher value so the ones that were that had very little ecological value um, I'm not an expert on, <laughs> on that myself but from what I'm told by our biodiversity manager is that we planted much better trees just a little bit further down so that it was a bit it was better for the forecourt but also better for the local area uh, and then all of our solar farms as well that we have across the country have beehives and again specially curated flowers and and uh, greenery around the site too that's awesome yeah and it's, it's so important that sustainability efforts such as this are a net gain for the environment because exactly. otherwise what's the point because exactly. we need to be reversing the damage that we as a site have done over time. Definitely, and that also with our leasing as well, is whenever we uh, lease a vehicle, we plant 100 trees to offset the production of that vehicle. So that way it all offsets, and we're using clean energy here as well. So at the moment, the site is powered by the grid and then offset by a solar farm about 40 miles away that, that puts all of its power back into the grid uh, to, to you know counterbalance it. But we will have sites in the future, hopefully, that will be completely solar powered entirely, which is really really cool <laughs> and for the, the folks watching this from my part of the world from norfolk we know that the second forecourt is being built just yeah. outside of norwich yeah, and norwich that's coming hopefully early exciting. next year i believe so that's that's up yeah the building is is there it's really really exciting can't wait to see how that goes hopefully i'll get to visit it <laughs> visit up there and uh and we'll yeah. probably teach them how to do it you know being the first ever ones to do it uh be very exciting to see another one right i've got a challenging question to end with right yeah. If you could give us only one fact that could blow a high school student's mind, or even their teacher's mind, what would that one fact be? Oh, 
about grid serve. I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, we do. We do quite a lot. I'm just. Uh, I'm just thinking. I mean, there's obviously there's the obvious, we're doing a hundred of these in five years and everything. Uh, Which is no small feat. There's no small. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> um, I think it's it's the, the what the cars can do really. I mean, you're looking at you're looking at take the the high end Ionic Five for example. That could power your power your anything. You can get an adapter for that. You plug it into your car and you can charge the fridge. I mean, there was someone on Twitter said the other day they had the they had a power cut and they plugged the, their fridge into their car and they kept all their food cool. Yes. So I think that's probably the coolest one that would uh, that I think is really really cool is that we're look, we're entering a stage where the cars won't just be cars anymore. They could they can be batteries. Yeah. That will store the power. Power your, your house could be powered by your battery. And say if you had panels on your roof, you could take the solar power, put it into the, the house when it needs it. Then overnight, when everything's off, put it into the car. Then the car powers the house. The pa- the ba- the panels feed the battery in the car, and you just got this yeah. circle, this system going round and round. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably the coolest, uh, the coolest, the, the coolest thing. That's something that's that's really exciting for me. Yeah. So yeah. Well, Declan, thank you very much for joining me and uh, best of luck with all the endeavours with Gridsoft. Thank you. Thank you for coming as well. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's always fun to, to speak to like-minded people and, and have a voice, you know, <laughs> voice, uh, voice all of what we're doing. So thank you. A place like this answers many of the valid criticisms of owning an EV. You can charge them with renewable energy rather than a mix containing fossil fuels. You can enhance an environment through development. But developments such as these, although much needed and very welcome, aren't the silver bullet to fully accessible and greener ways of getting around. So this is Tom Yango from Essex County Council, um, also uh, an ex-colleague, shall we say, from yeah. the University of East Anglia. So Tom, um, your work with Essex County Council then, all about sustainability and whatnot, and we're here at the grid surf forecourt. So what's your point of view from, um, from an Essex County Council? So, I think that, well, my, firstly, my work with the council is with the Climate Action Commission. And the Climate Action Commission has been set up by the council to develop recommendations to eventually get to net zero uh, in, in county-wide in, in terms of its emissions, and essentially, which is just carbon neutrality. And so, a fundamental aspect of that is, of course, transport. Um, and as much as we'd love to get people out of cars to active transport, cycling, walking, and public transport, uh, individual transport via individual cars is always going to be very ingrained in society mm. and so in that case we need to definitely try and promote and move towards uh, electrification of vehicles uh, and individual cars and so that's why it's fantastic that Essex can host Gridserve which is the yeah, right behind country's first, world's first if I'm actually electric from charging four cork, um, which is huge. As I'm sure you can see, it's, it's spans a lot and it, and it, it contains a lot of vehicles. And also there's uh, a catering inside, yeah. a shop inside, so people can, you know, they don't get bored whilst they're charging their vehicles. So I think this is the kind of model for what I assume will be dotted around the country in 20, sort of 30 years time. And the next one's going to be in Norwich. Well, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. whether you're working here now in Brayshaw, you go back up the Norwich, exactly, you've got yeah. to choose from. Yeah, so. exactly. So it's great to see East Anglia leading the way in uh, in electrification of, uh, of our cars. But like I say, the priority is getting people on their bikes, getting people walking and public transport. But this, of course, is an emerging industry that is going to have a huge influence on how we create more sustainable transport systems. And uh, yeah, it's great to be part of that. Awesome. The GridServe Electric Forecourt here in Essex will serve as a model for what is possible. This is why outreach is so important and even politicians are getting in on the act. But while we can get the view of the likes of them, council workers and gurus, what does the mini geographer think? Okay, we're all charged up, didn't take long at all, about 30 to 40 minutes, only £2.60. What was your verdict, mini geographer? I thought I think I think it was great because it didn't use any fossil fuels to ch- charge it up. It just used solar panels. Yeah, and there they are. There's some of them anyway, right up there. What was your favourite bit? I think I know what you're going to say. My favourite bit was going going in going in the play area and also seeing how it was charging yeah. um, and doing those treadlings. 
<laughs> yeah, those bikes. Right, big thumbs up from us two. Yeah. Well done, grid serve. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please visit jogramblings.com for more geography related educational material and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Keep these videos free by supporting me on Coffee and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.